my friend. Yo, what's up? How you doing, man? I'm chilling. I'm chilling. I was gonna do a different thing today with you specifically. Okay. Uh, what I wanted to do with you today is I wanted to take a different approach to this one. Okay. Because in this case, I actually play Hecarim a little bit. Yep. But now I'm going to have you I'm going to rate my Hecarim. Rating your Hecarim. Ra <laughs> All right, we can do yeah. it. I'm down. Yeah. Yeah, you're going to rate. You're going to rate it. I'm going to play it in I'll I'll go I'll go a diamond game. Okay. How do you want to approach this? Live. What do you mean? What do you mean? How do you want to approach it? So, do you want me to? Do you want to start right away with the game, or do you want me to just like go into a thing? Because like I know you play a lot of Hecarim, but there's a difference cool. between playing Hecarim and like having a real like understanding of like essentially what the champion is and what he's capable of, and like how to really one v nine games. So, do you want me to go over that for you? So here, here's what here's what we do. Yes, I do like this. Um, okay. Let's do like a. I'll hop into practice tool and can you share your screen with me on discord? You know how to do that? Yep. I played EOS diamond. I thought I got pretty good at it, but I would be very curious to see not only what you have to say about the champion, what you think is good on the champion, but also just like little tips and tricks that you've picked up along the way that maybe I didn't even know about. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, I guess the first thing I'd want to ask you then is do you think Trinity force and divine Sunder are good items to build on hacker? Uh, I like probably about four or five months ago, I would have said yes to Sunderer. Is that really that bad? Well, okay. So, cause the thing about it is a lot of people have this really bad interpretation of like what Hecarim is, right? So the thing about Hecarim is he's a champion that can easily deal with the enemy frontline, right? Since he's kind of like a tank that can heal a lot, but yeah. If he really wants to like be a solo carry champion, right? I'm not talking about like the pro scene. I'm not talking about like, oh, you just want to fulfill a role. I'm talking about really solo carrying games. Essentially, what you are is you're a tanky assassin. So you're someone who needs to dive in the enemy backline, but instead of using like invisibility, which most assassins use, you use your movement speed, right? So like yeah. that's why in the past, um, you'll notice that the only time Hecarim's ever been viable at like a really, really high level, and the only times he's really been good, is when he has insane movement speed builds. Like, I don't remember if you're um, like active back then, but I think it was in Season 8 that a player hit rank 1 on uh, Hecarim. Do you remember that? Be nice to each other? Was that, was that NA? Yeah, it was NA. Yeah, I think I bumped into him a couple times. What the fuck was he doing back then, though? So back then, he was doing this, like, Predator build with Yumu's Trinity Force, and he would literally just go, like, 600 MS, one-shot the ADC. I remember this. Yep. I remember this. Yep. Yes. And uh, so that's, like, the one time Hecarim was, like, really viable. And then the other time he was viable at a high level was when it was the um, the recent changes, and it was the Chemtang Force of Nature Dead Man's build. Do you remember that? And then it was, uh, like, Udir Hecarim meta. This was, yeah. I think, yep. Recent, about yeah. a year, not, not even that long ago, a year, year, two years. Exactly. And then recently he's come back into the meta with the build that I created, which is like the chem tank man mean one. And the reason why, again, is because all of these builds share the same thing in common, which is that he's a tanky assassin. So he's someone that can go in, he eliminates a carry, the, the game is like 4v5, and if he can sit there and just like deal with the rest of the squishies on the front line, he's a 1v9 carry. But the problem is if you go for like a build, like let's say Sunder or Training Force, and then you go for, um, I don't know, like Conqueror, you actually can stay on the enemy carries reliably. And what that means is that you can never 1v9 a game. Why do you frame it like that? Because, so, Hecarim's a champion who, the way he actually gets countered, crazily enough, is by the enemy's mobility. So he's a champion that has a lot of movement speed, but if the enemy has more mobility than he does, it's, like, really bad for him. And that's why, um, when Hecarim would go conquer, let's say a few months ago, one of his worst matchups was actually Lilia. Which is weird, because you'd think that two champions who are movement-oriented and Hecarim who, like, out, uh, out damages and out heals her would do better, but because she would always be able to kite him, he could never get on her to do damage. 
it's almost like um it's almost like a Darius of the jungle in a way. So that's why now having uh access like phase rush and chem tank and all these different things allows you to really stay on enemy carries in an era where it's like they all have mobility. So like even if they go Gale Force, you can still stay on them. Even if they flash away, you can still stay on them. Even if they have like a Lulu, let's say, peeling them or a CC uh support peeling them, you can still stay on them no matter what, right? Okay. So that's why uh, I would say that every single game, like or at least in like ninety five percent of the games, doing the new like chem tank death sounds manmune build will give you a lot more like solo carry and a lot more solo one v nine potential than a uh, like a standard setup of let's say Trinity Force into Frozen Heart or like Trinity Force into Sterax or things like that. Yeah. So what I was doing before was I was going Conqueror. I was going Conqueror. And I was going uh, Resolve Secondary, and I was going Revitalize. I was basically I was basically just doing revitalize. I remember that was like in, in conditioning, I think. Yep. And then I did on Chilnees, I copied this build and I didn't know it was your build. Mm -hmm. I saw it getting popular, and then my editor, who linked this up, my editor told me that you were the one that created this build. So for the people that I guess before we get into the build though, we should talk about just general uh practice tool stuff. Are you in practice tool right now? You're not yet, are you? All right, let me I can bring it up. Uh, yeah, if there, I, I mean, I have some ideas of of important things for Hecarim, mm -hmm. um, and this is why I said that for this one, I wanted you to kind of rate my knowledge. Okay. Right with this champion, one of the things I think you were going to say is this. I was really proud of myself when I finally, when I finally like understood the mechanics of like baiting the flash with your E. Yep. You know what I'm talking about? Yes. Yep. Yeah, yeah. I also know how the ult works. Like I know how to mm -hmm. like aim it. I don't know if you do this like manual casting with your ult or if that's only a me thing. Uh, well, usually with my ult, I have so many like thousands of games on the champion that I know automatically like what the range is and all these kinds of things. When I'm yep. running up, I used to miss my ult all the time. So I started doing this type of thing. Mm -hmm. I can obviously, if I need to, I could just, you know, I can insta cast it. So I have like a manual cast with shift and then just like a standard. Yeah, you know I mean, yeah. Okay. Um, but yeah, I was showing basically the E, like you fake it and then you come back around after they flash and then mm -hmm. hit them anyways, right? Um, and then I pretty much just turn my W on when shit gets real has been my, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> has been my strategy. Yeah. Cause like, that's the thing that I always like tell hacker and players is that your W you use it in like one of two scenarios, um, or like one of three scenarios. One is when you're committing, but you need the healing. So you don't just want to use your W for, like, damage most of the time, right? Because your W, what it is, is it's a healing ability. So you want to use it when the enemy is fully committed and when you're also fully committed so you can make the maximum amount of, like, usage. So let's say you're running out of gin and you know he's just going to run away. Using your W in that scenario, especially when you're not sure if there are enemies nearby, is never a thing that you want to do. But a lot of Hecarim players have this, like, automatic thing where they want a W as soon as they E right mm. so that's why like uh, the first thing about your w is that you always want to use it when you're fully committed but there are certain times where let's say you're going for a top lane gank and you know that like this person but like you know it's just like a secured play like there's no kind of like hesitancy whatsoever of, do th can they kill me then you can use it for a bit of extra damage in case like they flash away or whatever and the other time you're actually going to use your w is for a face rush proc okay. so yep so do you want me to show you like a uh, little like tips, tricks, stuff like that now? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, let me pull this up on your end. Go ahead, my friend. Yeah, any any cool stuff that I don't know yet? Mm -hmm. Let's see if you can blow my mind. Let's see if you have something that I haven't seen yet. I think I should be able to like have something. Wait, what's the thing to Press stop the control shift? The control shift I. Control shift. Holy <laughs> shit. Okay. So I know. I know. one of the big things is when you have your chem tank. Uh, so you know how your phase rush procs after three, like, abilities? Well, the thing about chem tank is that it actually counts as an ability. So that's why sometimes what you want to do is, let's say you're going for a gank, you can chem tank WQ to proc your phase rush, and then if they flash, you have the increased, like, phase rush movement speed. Mmm, okay, I did not know this. Yep. I, I give you that one. So it's, like, it's better for, like, baiting out flashes and stuff like that. And that's why, like, uh, chem tank is also really good, is because it allows you to really, like... Like that thing of baiting out flashes, you can just do it a lot easier because you just ran them or do that. Or let's say you don't have chem tank yet, 
you can just exchange that but with smite, right? So like you're gonna use your WQ smite and then that also procs without using your chem tank active. So you're basically making it seem like you're running your E. Am I reading this right? Like yeah. it, it yeah. almost looks like it, when I look at this right now, if I was like on the other team, I'd be like, this guy's about to E me. And that's what yep. you're, wow, that's, that's no E. Yep. So it's just like this way of really just running at them. And, um, oh. yep. Okay. So uh, another kind of like neat thing is that when you're Eing, you can cast your alt like mid E. So I'll show you what this means. So like, let's say we spawn two enemy dummies, right? And I want you to imagine that this dummy is like 100 HP. And we know that I won't be able to make it onto it. What you'd actually want to do is you want to jump on it and then just instantly alt on it like that. Okay, be that's good. So, because I'll show you. Um, what happens is your E auto attack range makes your auto attack range bigger, right? So mm -hmm. that's why sometimes what I'll even do is I'll buy rapid fire cannon. And if you can get rapid fire cannon, what that does is like, if you look at your auto attack range, it's sort of like a Kaelin auto, right? <laughs> so you can sit there and then the damage is going to go off like that and you could just like get off this kind of nuke on two different carries Dude, this is awesome yep so that's uh so then another thing too uh, that a lot of hecarim players don't know is there's actually this kind of like one shot combo i guess you could call it that where you want to use your alt but you don't want to lead with r so the thing about hecarim is let's say we go and we alt on the enemy right and then imagine they flash our fear, and then we have to E on them. The thing is, the enemy isn't CC'd, right? Yes. So what I like doing is I like running at them with my E, and then as my E is going off, I ult. And what that does is it means that they're CC'd for the duration of the knockback, and then as soon as the knockback... Dude, what? Dude, yeah. this is stupid. Why didn't any of this fucking... I'm so annoyed with myself. Why <laughs> did this not fucking click with me? Yep. That one is, like, obvious, too. Mm-hmm. Damn it, dude. Now I'm pissed. I, like, walked into this whole fucking thing. Yeah, Jesus so, Christ, dude. So that's why, um, it's one of those things where, I'm telling you, if you try to do this alt, right, and then they have Gale Force or they have Flash, going for those max range ults is just never the angle. Yeah, so that's bad. why they always flash out, yeah. Yeah, so that's why if you sit there and you go like this, and then you get that, and then you go after, right? It just makes it so that everything is just so much easier. It looks smooth, too. And you yeah, it hit is. That, and that, that combos into... Is that, does that count as a full duration of fear? Or is that like a partial fear? Um, so the fear is going to go based off like how... Kind of like the knockback distance, I guess. So like, let's say you're knocking back. Then it would be like where they land, right? So you're going to go so like you've that. you got to kind of... This is more of a... You got to do it a few times to probably get the handle on. Yeah, like... Where you're going to place the... Yeah, so like... There is a frame in there. If you don't do it right, that they're, they might be able to squeak out anyways, right? <laughs> Mm, if you yeah that's the thing about it. it's like it really is something where you have to like the way you do it perfectly and this is actually the way i counter echo because they can never get their alt off versus me is you want to just go and then the second you're in your auto attack range then you get it off right and that's why like you can see if you time it perfectly you see how it almost looks like your e gets cancelled but your e auto attack is still going through mm -hmm. that's and, cool yeah. that's dope so wow. that that's like one of the biggest things um, that I would say about the champion. It really is just like Hecarim is a champion who displays skill through like movement and target selection. So it's all about like being able to get on the carry. So like imagine the enemy Jinx is here and this is the enemy frontline, right? And you already use your E here and you know you can't be able to get on it. That's why it's like sometimes it would be better to just go and then alt like that, right? So you use your E in a way where the enemy ADC would never be able to react because they think you're engaging on someone else. Yeah, I like this. Yeah, it's very clever. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I must credit you. You did You did show me some stuff. <laughs> did this, you, you, won, you won this round. Is there anything else or do you want to jump into a game? Um. Well, one last thing I just want to show you okay. is... One of the other reasons why I really like the chem tank build, right, is because, so that one-shot combo I was showing you earlier, um, the good thing about it is since you're getting all these abilities off at the same time, it actually makes you do a shit ton of damage. So if you look, let's say you go in, you see how the total damage is just like 2,500 instantly? Mm -hmm. If the enemy ADC even has like, let's say, I don't know, 100 armor, 
it's like this combo will still pretty much always uh, be able to bring them to like, let's say 20, 30% HP before like heals and all that stuff. So you can always one shot people from ahead or if like you're slightly behind as well. Honestly, uh, okay, there's actually one more thing I could show you. Okay. Uh, so one thing as well is if there's an enemy dummy over this wall, since Hecarim has a pretty large auto attack range, you can actually auto over these walls. Oh, cool. Yeah, I, I, I thought you were just going to show me an E over the wall, and I was like, yeah. Yeah, so you could like auto attack over walls, just share up autos, or even like Qs. Qs will still register. Mm. And then cool. as for um, E leaps, I could show you a few. One thing that I like doing is you can E like here. It's so, like to start yeah, the so Raptor this count. I have, this one I've had, I have used, yeah. And I'm Definitely sure you know like the Krugs one as well, though. This one, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but there's one more. So so then there's like one more leap you can do, but it only works on this side of the map. It doesn't work on the other side of the map. Is if you use your E and then you come to the blue buff, you can actually E over this wall like that. Didn't know that one. Yep. Did not know that one. Nice. So you can do that one, but it doesn't work on the other side uh, because of the elevation difference. Fucking riot, dude. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Man. I guess the only like last thing that I could tell you is that a lot of the time um, people like really underestimate their Q stacks. So that's why when you go for fights, what I like doing a lot as well, is like I'll stack Q against like a minion or I'll stack Q against like a jungle camp and then I'll look for an engage with Q stacks. Because fighting with I Q stacks- don't do, I, I don't do that as often as I probably should. I definitely do it off of a clear, but I don't think I'll like- Yeah. I don't think I do that necessarily as much as I probably could. Yeah, that's why like you really want to think like uh because I'm sure you've had a lot of situations where you were playing games and you got let's say there's a big team fight and the enemy ADC gets like twenty percent HP but then she lives and her entire team like wipes you right and yeah, yeah. that's why getting those Q stacks beforehand can legitimately just completely change games so like you'd stack against here and then like already you saw right away got and it. you have the Q. No, that's smart. Yeah, I don't. I, I normally am really selfish and I never like leave a clear when I start it. You know what I'm saying? But there's yeah. definitely times I know where like I'll path by a camp and I'm pretty sure I'm not stacking the queue like that, like deliberately before. Yep. I so come down in. So that's why sometimes what I'll even do is uh, let's say I'm going to look for a top gank. I'll just start my queue here. And then it's like you'll bring the, you'll literally just drag the Krugs out for the sole purpose of like keeping queue stacks. And then, like, you can go in, and now you can keep your Q stacks until literally the middle of the lane, you see? So, yeah. like, if the enemy is anywhere here, then you keep your Q stacks, and you can just kill them easier. Yeah, and they become, like, a jungle camp. Yep, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> just sweet. one shot. All right, but sweet, yeah. Sweet, sweet. Now yeah. you can uh, get into your game. Yeah, let's do this. I'm going to queue up, and you're going to... You're going to rate my Hecarim. Blue's to right here? Uh, let me see the team. Press up. Yeah, I'd go blue this game. Okay. And then, uh, wait, press up again. Don't leave base up. Okay, so I would actually sell we, uh, refund refillable and take a potion and control word. I like it. I like. And what you're going to do is I want you to go and place a control word on your blue buff bush right now. And the reason why is because Kindred's a champion who could sit there and do red into blue gromp, like your blue gromp. And if he does that and you don't know, it completely ruins your game. But if you have this control word, what it allows you to do is it really allows you to sit there and like... You swap the sweeper here? Nope, don't swap the sweeper. But now what you need to do is uh, when you're double camp clearing your uh, blue and gromp, you want to make sure that Kindred doesn't invade you if he doesn't already invade you on like like level two. So that's why uh, you see the bush, like the little, like go to your, like the other bush. In your jungle? No, no, like in your blue side. In your blue side. Oh, God. Uh, uh, no, no, no. One. Yep. So, like, that's why I always place a ward there when I'm double cam clearing. So, that if the enemy jungler comes, at least I have more time to react to it. Got it. Let's see if I can do this clear. I haven't done it in a while, buddy. You put me on the spot here. <laughs> Another thing you want to do is you only want to use your smite if the leash is bad. So, like, if the if the leash is, like, really good yeah. and he leaves and it's, like, let's say 400 HP, don't smite. But if he leaves, like, 700 AP, HP, smite it to finish. Oh, so there you would want to finish it with Q. That way you... Yeah, so you say you drop Q stacks? Oh, my fucking... That's why I know you... better than that. Yeah, so you always want to finish camps with your Q. And the reason why is so that you can preserve Q stacks to your other camp. See if I can do this transition first time. Yep. Don't bring it further back than that, or that it's going to reset. Okay. Good. All right, so, here we go. So now you just want to wait. Just wait, just wait. And then now go for the Q. Perfect. And now you can it, yeah. now you W to pre like uh, preemptively aggro. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. We got this. We got this. It's been a while, but chilling. You're doing well. 
So, uh, so are you drop over and like do one of that? Yep, exactly. And now you wanna? I, I would have already like went to start the gromp. Like by the way, like the yeah, second you, yeah, the second you start your blue, you just always want to go and start your gromp right away so that you can get as many cues off as possible. But we know Kindred yeah. path towards top, so even though you have a pretty unhealthy clear, it shouldn't really matter. Okay, well Kindred top. Wait, press up quick, real quick. Press up. Twenty four CS level three. Okay, so his Krugs are up. Take his Krugs. Take his Krugs. So that's why you always want to look when the enemy does that, because if he's level three and he's still um like if he's twenty four CS level three, then you know he didn't take his Krugs, right? Got it. And then now we could look for a potential bot dive. So now check out the ballin. Okay, so we can't. So I would just like do this, and then I drop a ward in the little bush, and then I'd reset. Yep. Now just recall. Oh wait, you could actually look for something. Yeah, here? I gotta get that. Ah, this exhaust. It's alright. Just back off now. There yeah. you go. Alright, not bad. Alright, so items. This is where I this is where I really wanted you. Yep, so now you're just gonna go Ionian Rush. Ionian Rush and then swap into Sweeper. Okay. Alright, uh, so we see Kindred's bot and we know that he did like Raptors into Wolves. So what you could actually look for is you could look for I would just go straight Raptors here. Go straight Raptors and yeah, then invade his top side. And then cut across, right? Yep, exactly. I like it. Yeah, I would just saw on the wolves. Like right away, just right on the wolves. Yeah, I'm heading. Uh, but don't, whatever you do, do not use your W on the camp. Oh, wait, what? Fuck? How the fuck are these not? They should be up any second. Yeah, there you go. Okay. <laughs> so, this isn't right. Do you know why you don't, don't want to? use it? your W on. Yeah, I don't, I don't. And I want to know why. Because uh, if you ever get collapsed on here, your W is capped against healing from monsters, but it's not against champions. So you want to like save it every time you're making an invade um, in case you get collapsed on. But now, since we saw Kendra around mid, it's like, you can use your W now for healing. It shouldn't really matter. And then I would smite as well. Uh, I would not look for a top dive, by the way. He's still full HP. I'm telling you, I'm telling you just like, uh, I would take boss going over. Take boss going over and just clear from top to bot. Okay. Got it. Yeah. Because that's the thing about Hecarim. You don't need to force these early plays ever if they're like even somewhat risky. Because you got will it. scale with this build. This is a scaling build. He doesn't fall off anymore. Got it, got it. Are my backing after this, you think, in tier here? Um, yep. So I'd get tier into Ruby Crystal. And then afterwards, you could look to see if maybe there's a bot opportunity. Um, and then you should be good. Should yeah. I be going... Are you uh, going look right at here? the save bot. Look at the save bot first. Real fast. Okay, so they're shoving in. So I would go Gromp into uh, bot gank. I would go Gromp okay. into level 6 into bot gank, since I don't think the enemy is going to reset bot anytime soon, since they're pretty high HP, high mana. Like, they're probably just backing off revision right now. Yeah, I see. So now if you just go uh, Gromp, and then you're level 6, then you can kill. You can use your W for this, it'll be up by the time the gang starts again. Okay, I like it. Just use, sweep it. Yeah. use Sweeper, check, vision. Alright, uh, so I would I would just like walk around and try, walk around through try. Yeah, try. I'm thinking. Okay, so it's forwarded. Yeah, so I would just like clear ward, and then go, um, if anything, yeah, just go crab here. It's kind of a sketchy, not finding any options yet. Yeah, exactly. But that's the thing. It's like, you don't need to find options. Got like, early, since you're like a scaler with this build, you don't really don't need it. And now since you have bot power, I would take dragon. 100% take dragon yeah, here. I like it. I don't so that's, fucking smite because I wasted it. But. Yeah, that's okay. But that's the thing about it. Um, I would much rather take like dragons and then just play safe for farming and then scale and not put any trust in my team, especially in solo queue, than sitting there and try to coordinate these like uh, dives or any of these things that Mm -hmm. Would like be yeah. uh, so. I would look at the state of like mid, state of mid top. Okay, just like checking to see if any dives can be done. Maybe look at Bali now. All right, so nothing can be done. So again, just like full clear, and then maybe look for Herald. So you just want to like maximize the amount of prior you get. Uh, yeah, I would just go straight into Krugs after, and then I would just go Herald right away. Okay. So it really, it's like then. yeah, you're just like playing for neutrals because. If you play for neutrals, there's really no going wrong, right? Like, the enemy team... Like, this is a thing I've learned. The enemy team cannot close out games if they don't get neutrals most of the time. At least that's, like, the current meta. So if the enemy team isn't playing for neutrals early, and you are, no matter how many kill advantage they get, you will always be able to come back. Yeah, so it's good you're not... Okay, so now I would just ult on him. Ult on him right away and kill him. Ult on him right away and kill him. Go. Whoa. Did I really get that fucking... I'm so fucked here. No, no, just smite out smite health. Smite health for HP. Damn, mm. that was my bad. I eat the yeah. fucking, I eat the fucking kindred. Yeah, that's alright. Shame. I mean, to be fair, I didn't, I didn't feel like oh, you would cool. have ult. Okay, so I'd get bombies. 
So uh, the other cool thing about Bombies is that it counts as a proc of phase rush. So you can sit there and WQ Bombies procs ca counts for phase rush when you're going for ganks. I So the reason I smited Kindred there, just so you hear why I'm bad, is because I thought that if I smited Kindred, she might ult and keep me alive. Yeah. If I like bluffed it out of her, you know? That's all right. Okay, just run her down here. 100%. Mm, I so, think Kindred's here though, yeah. Yeah, just back off. So there, that's a scenario where you could have gotten a Q sack on the scuttle before going for that fight. Got it. Yep. Got it. So it's little things like that. Like just look for any kind of thing where it's like, oh, I could look for a Q sack on this or a Q mm -hmm. sack on that. And now I would just play it safe and I would just say, okay, Gromp uh, into Wolves, into Raptors, and then look around. Uh, look mid real fast. Okay, yeah, no there's <laughs> 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 that's right this is the thing about it so like this is the best hecarim place off for solo queue if you're like good enough to mechanically carry which is just to let your teammates suffer while you just take all the secured plays you don't put any <laughs> trust in them and then you just 1v9 in team fights let them suffer i love that that's why that's actually how i did my like unranked to challenger in like six days is literally just doing this full clear into dragon play cell never ever trusting my team and then um never helping anybody and just only playing for myself <laughs> and winning every game so I'm going to clear this and then probably back for drag here. Yep. And just stress yep. out the Malphite a little bit. Yeah, exactly. The cool thing is now too, is you're going to be like 14 minutes in and you have two dragons. So imagine even if the game starts going bad now, you still have two dragons denied from the enemy so they can never play for a soul win condition. And if you... I like that. And it's like if you sit there and you outscale them and they can't get soul, you're just going to win games even if you're 20 kills down. Nice, nice, nice. Use ghost. Fast. Use ghost. Perfect. Oh, that's bullshit. Yeah, so perfect. Really, really, really good. I had to, yeah, I had to ult that guy out. Yep. That's the thing about a Kindred matchup. You always want to lead with your R. And the reason being, yeah. if you lead with R and then, um, like, you can burst him down. But if you lead with your E and then he ults, no amount of, like, ult fear range is going to make him leave his R. The only way is, like, if you insta R and then fear him and then. Got it. So that's the other uh, interesting thing that a lot of people don't know. You can redirect your alts fear like um, position because they're feared away from you every time, right? So like, let's say you alt on someone and they're running away from you. If you just like run behind them, they're gonna be running like towards your team now. Got it. So the other reason why I love getting the uh, manmean build as well is because I don't know if you remember, but when you would play Hecarim without tier, I'm sure you would have felt the mana issues. And now, since you have tier, you never have mana issues, so you can always use your E and W during your clear, which makes your clear speed so much faster. Yeah, it is fast as fuck. Uh, perfect. So now you can just go Krugs, reset, and then maybe look balling for a player or something. Uh, press tab real quick. Wait, I want to save that. Mm, here what I'd probably look for side? I would look for a ball play, honestly. With ult and chem tang and, and like some. Well, what about and this spawning though? Yeah, we can just save that. Ethos. Like you're you're right, but it's just one of those things where imagine enemy spawns and then Kindred's top side and then they have Malphite Prio and then you know, it's like it could end badly. So it's not so much it, it's like you always want to just take the secured play. And right now a ball play is a secured play with like waves and everything. Oh it's worth it. Oh I'm on a fucking ward, yeah, damn it. Yeah. It's alright. Alright. We're probably gonna go Honestly, there, just use sweeper no. and regank. Use sweeper, make sure it's not worried. Okay. What I would do is I would actually clear this ward and then take the long yeah. Take the long way around. What yeah, take the long way around. Yeah. Perfect. And now you could look for the gank. Oh well. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> These happens. guys are mind readers, I guess. <laughs> They're crazy. It isn't so much like um, a place where you're only playing for like neutrals and stuff like that, as much as like always just secured plays. You just never want to take risks, more or less. Well, since they got rid of uh, topside, I kind of want to path up there. Maybe yep. I can fuck with this guy. I might be able to kill him here, I think. Yeah, I would too. Like E, Chemtang, WQ for phase rush, and then like see where she is from. See? And now you can sit there. And now alt, 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 fast, fast. Ah. You can still run her down. I still am going. I'm yeah, you got, it, you got it. You got it. It's okay. I've been there. Yeah, you saw that? I've, I've been there. It's you okay. Saw that <laughs> yeah. Ran right into that motherfucker. Yeah. I was just, no, that was optimal. That was optimal. Yeah. You want it because, like, you knew you wouldn't die. So you want to get the turret damage off. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks. Yeah, I'm yeah. glad you really see it. That's why you've been there because you know. Yeah. That was game theory optimal, is what that was. <laughs> 
<laughs> but, uh, There's nothing wrong with that play. I would say the only thing about it, though, is uh, you should have instantly r right after a call used R1 because there's a little bit of delay before she can use R2 again. That's why you were hollering for it because I yep. was – in my head, in my head, I was thinking – I want to wait because I was like waiting for her to use it so I could follow up. But I see yeah. there was like a frame there where I'm allowed to. Yeah, exactly. Would you go for this here? I think I should. No, I would just reset. Just reset. Look at Dragon Timer. Look, look at it. Okay. Like press up. So now the reason why is you want to go for Wolves into Gromp and then Dragon. So the reason why I don't go Man Mute second anymore is because I take the Precision Tree instead of Domination. So I used to take Domination Tree, which allowed me to get Man Mute second, since it actually allows you to... Ingenious Hunter allows you to like stack tier faster. But now since I go Precision Tree, since Death Sense is a really good item, and you're only building Man Mute third, it makes it so you don't get Man Mute as second anymore. So I would just like go. And then keep your Q-Stacks off Gromp, and then look for the fight. Oh, well, it's okay. There you go, good seal. I'm gonna bail though. Yep, that's what you needed. Just run with it. Should be up in a second. That was oh. a good try. Yeah, it's okay. So the only thing that I would say is like going for the seal was good, but then after I wouldn't have instantly used my uh, Eon the Kindred, because you kind of knew that fight you would never be able to win. So yeah, you... I think I, I think I just fat fingered mostly. Yeah. 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 Exactly. So that's the yeah. thing where you just want to like save you. But now this is what I'm getting at. It's like even though your team is even in kills. It's like you're a level. We have a soul condition. Yeah. yeah, exactly. It's like, and that's what I love about this playstyle. It just makes it so easy to win games. Oh shit! Word. Uh, you, wall. Yeah. yeah. Maybe you could look for it though. Yeah. She's probably staying in the bush. Go check the bush. Yeah, there you go. There you go. And now you just focus. Nope. You're chilling. But yeah, I would say that this playstyle, by the way, of like full clear into dragon every game, only really starts to fall for around like challenger. Because you should be more dynamic, is what you're saying. Like, yeah, like, exactly. Elo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you're getting at. Yeah. Because like in lower elo, especially if you have a mechanical lead, you can or like uh like a, a lead that only you have, you can control the outcome, right? And if you try coordinating dubs with your team and they don't go well. Uh, because like you are playing with people who will make a lot of mistakes, it just makes things really bad. But in Halo, you kind of have to trust your team. I right, just get that Yumi. Mm. I wouldn't have bolted there to be honest, and I would have even okay. taken the kill. So that's the thing about it. it's like you want to take all the resources. It's like fuck your team, they're intro bots. You take everything, you know. Okay. Like you need to view it. Honestly, every single game, view your teammates as NPCs. They're literal bots, and it's like you just oh, have to sit there yeah. and be like, "What do you do? Just see out, yeah." Uh, mm, you gotta be lucky there because sometimes it has a wonky interaction with like Bascom will just like knock you over. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, because like you turn the corner, yeah, yeah, exactly. So, other cool thing about Death Stance and Triumph is that if you get literally one kill, you're gonna heal for 500. So, that's why now you can play off these limits of like you can take a lot of damage, and even if you get low, or you, you're playing for resets now. That's like the fun thing about Death Sounds. You're just like, just constantly look for resets on like enemy lowest HP target. I mean, we do get a free soul here in two minutes, so. Yeah, exactly. Okay, this guy's no ult now. I should probably take a reset. Uh, Press tab. How long until Giants off? Oh, shit. 30. 30? Mm, I would stick around. Huh? Uh, actually, no, you can. You have time to recall. Like, really fast, really okay. fast. What I would actually do here is I would even go for Elixir Iron. Oh, well. Enemy team doesn't she's want you to. She's stressing me out. I want to reset here. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I would actually get an elixir of iron here. Okay, that's interesting. Why you just think it's such a valuable fight that? Yeah, so that's the thing. When you have like big fights like this, you just want to sit there and get as much as you possibly can. Cause like the game, if you win this like this fight, the game is won. So that's why like it. you don't have to like sit there and game. yeah. Yeah. You could have won like stopwatch as well, which might have been better. Yeah, I was thinking anything. about that actually. I was thinking about yeah. that too. Stopwatch. Yeah. Or just because you never want to really build into GA, so... This is a needless coin flip. I think I just engage here. Yep. Look for look for an ult over the wall on Kindred. That's how I'd be doing. Oh, it's okay. Mm. If fear would have landed, though. It's okay. Now, now Kindred has an ult. She can't walk up. I would have uh, dragged out, dragged out, dragged out, dragged out, dragged out. Ping. Ping back, ping back. You don't want to risk, like, stolen. Okay, now, now go in, though. I'm bad! God damn it. It's okay. That's my fault. 
Yeah. If you so the other thing too is like if you would have been attacking Malphite there, and if you would have like uh, killed him even like a second earlier, you would have gotten Death Sounds Triumph, and you would have uh, literally killed everybody. By the way. So the what I was doing was I lost track of this. Day. I knew that she was gonna DPS it fast, but yep. I was like I was trying to bump her, <laughs> and get the quick <laughs> get the quick pressure on her and push her yeah. away. But it was just such a stupid play, other than yeah, exactly. on dragon, you know. Yeah, because don't forget Hecarim E. Like you can use Hecarim EQ with like Chemtank proc and Smite for like a guaranteed twelve hundred Smite, right? Like mm, never yeah, really yeah, like true. a fifty fifty. So you use it as like a secure. Exactly. Yeah. And sometimes if it's like a really important objective, I might even like use my ult as well. <laughs> Just like why like why not? Another hundred damage in there too. Oh you motherfucker. So that's the thing too. It's like right now your team's fighting and they're winning fights, but it's like you you don't care about them. That's the thing you have to realize. It's it's like, it's like good it's like good that they're winning, but I'm just an insurance policy. It's what exactly. I tell my clients. Yep, exactly. It's like it's cool, like great, good for them. Yep. GG. All right. Yeah. Dude, this was great. This is a super effective coaching session. Mm -hmm. I learned so much. One thing genuinely I would genuinely impressed. Genuinely impressed. Um, what are you gonna say? But I just wanted to show you one thing. Like, if you're gonna look yeah. at my screen. Yeah, yeah, I can pull it up. So when I was talking earlier about the um, the hacker melt, right? Because I'm not sure if you completely understood what I was getting at. Um, let me show you. Let me see. Because a lot of people, Hecker Malt, like, I'm being dead serious when I say this. I've been, like, mating the champ since, like, season six, and I've, like, had thousands of games on him, but I only really understood his ult after, like, two years, right? Of, like, actually playing the champion. So that's why, like, a lot of Hecarim players are going to have a lot of problems with their ult, and I just want to, like, go over, like, a few things just to make sure that the same thing doesn't happen with you, right? Yo, this is good. Yeah, go ahead. All right. Um... So imagine we're sitting here and we buy like these items, right? And then shift this. Okay. So the way your alt actually works um, is the enemy is feared in the direction that you are, right? So imagine I would sit here and alt him here, but then I'd walk oh, around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He'd walk like that, right? So yeah. that's like a thing that a lot of people don't get. They think like the initial place that you alt is where they're going to run towards. So they think, oh, he's always going to run here. But you can actually hurt them wherever you want. So if I alt oh, there, yeah, yeah. I and then... This. I do know yeah. this. Okay. Yeah. And then the other thing too is like, obviously, you know... That's why I use the... That's why I use the... Because when I showed you earlier, mm -hmm. I have that, that manual cast for that reason. Because when I was picking the champion up... When I would, you know, like when you're sprinting in, like you play this champion all the time, right? Yep. So you're saying it's like, it's more muscle memory by now. But when I play him, like I don't get to play that much. So when I'm sprinting up, I use the manual cast. So if you sprint up and use the manual cast, you can like kind of place it. Yeah. You can get that max range down. It's a really good exactly. trick. Yep. Kind of cheat the fucking, the, the chance of missing. Um, but dude, this was like, yep. this was super useful, man. Like you... That, I, I love hearing these little nuances from like, uh, like, cause I tell clients just to ignore dragons generally. And a lot mm -hmm. of jungle coachings for low elo. I yep. find it interesting that for you, you're actually like, you're of the opinion right now that it's like, oh, I should just take these well, and just stack them uh, up. Okay. How do I explain this to you? It's kind of like the way I approach every league game is I just view myself as the main character more or less. <laughs> and the way I see it is like if you can get a dragon soul, it's almost like you get the fiery sword of Excalibur. So you just want to play for soul because if you're already a 1v9 player and then you got the dragon soul, you just make yourself like the literal hero. Do you see what I'm getting at? Yeah, no, no, I do. I do. I think I think the reason that I'm always hesitant to do it is generally because I feel like when I play for it, it often, but I guess you, d you had me path down before you went for it. Yeah. So that's actually, yeah. that's why I actually will always full clear top to bot. And the reason why is because if you full clear top to bot and then you have no opportunities on your second full clear, you can treat dragon as like a seventh camp and then just like mm. take that as well. So wait, you clear. Now that was something we didn't really touch on. And I think we should before we go. 
So you're saying you do top to bottom regardless. Period. Every single game. Every single game. I think right I now. I love this. Yep. So the reason being is I think balling right now is by far the biggest win condition in like literal 99% of your games. Um, just with like champion difference and like the way the meta is. And I also think playing for dragons is like better than playing for like early heralds, especially in NA. In Korea, I might say it's different, but in NA, since players will make a lot of mistakes and will throw games, you just want to make sure you're getting those advantages that can't be thrown. I like that idea because I, I do know what you're saying. Bot lane gets out of control really fast. And if you're pathing top to bottom, because Hecarim can't really do a three camp to bottom. I mean, he could, but it's trash, right? Yeah. So, like, if you clear top to bottom and they fight, then you show up and pick up the pieces a exactly. lot of time, yep. too. Yep, yep. So, yeah, it's like... I like that logic. Yeah. The, way you, the way you should be seeing it is, like, if, let's say, it's like you never lose. If you path top to bottom and the enemy jungler is also pathing top to bottom, you can force CV3s. And then, if you're pathing top to bot and the enemy jungler isn't, you can force dives or you can play for... um. You can just like pick up kills or you can get dragons, right? With the prio that now the enemy jungler is on the other side of the map. Yeah, so and he's going to take he's gonna take Rift. And yeah, there might be like a Giga Garen or something. But like you said, it's not going to stop Hecarim anyways. Yeah, and not yeah, just that, like, but it's also like, let's say you have a Jinx Lulu, right? What fed top laner will ever be able to deal yeah, exactly. with the fed Jinx Lulu? Yep. Yeah, I agree. Dude, this was super helpful. I really appreciate you doing this. I will, uh, I will definitely post this and I will shout you out. Dude, I yeah. sincerely appreciate this. It was very, very good. I'm not just like blowing smoke. Like yeah. I played this champion a lot recently. Like, well, probably in the past, like I don't know, year. I, I like I said, I played about a 200 games, and you showed me a lot of cool things and a lot of cool perspective. And I'm gonna use this now. Yeah. The, you know, the next time I play him. So thanks so much, buddy. Yeah. And good luck with your stream and everything. Uh, well, uh, one thing before we go though. Um, okay. One of the cool things about asking you to coach me was that before I ever like got into streaming or ever got into like Hilo or anything like that. Back when I was, I think, like 15, I used to watch your streams literally all the time. Thanks, man. Yeah, that back, means a lot. Thank yeah, you. Like, back when you are on Twitch, you're actually, like, one of the few guys I would, like, always, always watch. So, doing a coaching with you was definitely, like, a really, really fun thing, for sure. Well, thank you so much, man. I, that actually makes my day a lot better. I'm glad I'm glad that, I, uh, that I've been a positive influence. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> thank you so much, dude. And, uh, yeah, I'll be in touch. We'll work again sometime soon, okay? All right. Much love, bro. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, right, same. Have a good one. Peace. You too. Peace. All right, not bad, not bad. I mean, this is so funny story. I didn't actually tell him, but um, I used to watch his streams all the time, and I actually ended up getting permanent banned from his stream because <laughs> one time I was like typical standard like Twitch cancer viewer, and one time he was doing this like bot review with a guy, and the bot review was like thirty minutes long, and. We were like, he was like, let's say 15 minutes into the game. And he's like, all right, I already know what your problem is. And you need to work on this, this, this. And he ended it. So I started just spamming scam. <laughs> I started spamming scam. He looked at chat. He said, why is there a cancer chatter spamming scam? And then I got permabanned. <laughs> I mean, I still watch him after, but it was fucking funny. Manisa's <laughs> uh, definitely like a really fucking cool guy.